Hello everyone. Welcome to our new Advent meditation. Welcome for those who are just passing by, looking for something to listen to, a study, a meditation, something fun. That's all fine. So if you belong here, and if you push the button here, you're welcome. And also for those who are not sure. I mean, you don't have to be belonging to, but just push and try. This is Pastor Yeti. We are in our Advent Day 12, Thursday. And today our meditation is gift-giving and God. Our readings are from Psalm 126, Habakkuk, and Philippians. Psalm 126. When the Lord restores the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying chiefs with them. Habakkuk 2, 1 to 5. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See, the enemy is puffed up. His desires are not upright. But a righteous person will live by his faithfulness. Indeed, wine betrays him. He is arrogant and never at rest. Because he is greedy as the grave, he gathers to himself all the nations and takes captive all the people. Philippians 3, 7 to 11. But whatever were gains to me, I know consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing word of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, 
to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. May I gain Christ and be found in Him. The law was, is, such a huge central tenet of Judaism. The law was given in, in grace. However, for Jews, its effect, benefits, result by my own doing, my willpower, my obedience, my actions. If I do it all right, then I am righteous and able to be declared good enough for God's sake. This is not how Christians understand it to work. Our righteousness are good enough for God. God's wanting to be in relationship with us is not determined by adherence to any code of conduct or law. Our righteousness is not ours and we do not control it. We receive it through faith in Jesus Christ who supplies it to us out of pure and simple grace. There is no earning it or deserving it, nothing we can to make grace come to us or leave us. It is just because God proclaimed it that way through Christ. This is very hard concept for many Christians to understand. We have a Puritan work ethic so instilled within our souls that we cannot escape to believe that we can work our way to heaven. That the harder I work and the better I am, I will be rewarded. And conversely, if I don't work hard or I am an awful person, I'll be punished for it and just may not make it to heaven. It is just too hard to believe and grasp that our righteousness does not come to us that way, but through faith and the saving acts of Christ, who did it all for us. We are not very good at accepting gifts We look for the strings that we believe are attached. We don't want to feel obligated in taking a gift. What if I want to return it? There's an irony in Advent. So many of us have gifts and gift giving on our minds. We spent dozens of hours and hundreds of dollars or any money you use in your country trying to buy the most perfect gift for our loved ones, while all at the same time all of them have received a huge magnanimous gift from God through faith. Most of us don't think of gift-giving in this light. Perhaps gift-giving is the opportunity presented to practice receiving a gift. Learning to accept the gifts that God lays in our lap every single day. We will never be able to outgive God. Now grab your journal. Were you raised with a strong work ethic? 
How easy it is for you to embrace the idea that you are saved by grace. If grace abounds as alluded to above, what then do we do with sin? How do we conceptualize it in light of grace? The money spent on giving gifts amounts to perhaps billions of dollars of whatever money per year. If Christmas is truly about Christ, then where would be more appropriate places to shove this money than into material stuff? It's not a judgment. It's a thinking about gift giving and God. My dear ones, faith is not a guilt trip. Do we have to turn around and face the face of God if there's something wrong, like we call sin? Yes. Do we have to repent? Do we have to make it better? Do we have to work on our attitudes? Yes and yes and yes. But the grace of God has gifted us with so many gifts. As you heard from the letter to the Philippines, that Paul wanted to lose everything to have that particular gift, Christ. So faith is not a guilt trip, but a journey. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks for all that you have given us. And we pray for an easier time accepting it and returning it to those who have less. Amen. God will never say stop giving gifts to your loved ones or to a stranger. No. It's what's beyond. I wish you a wonderful Advent day. May God bless you. Advent blessings.